Welcome back to the carnivorous plant cold frames outside the production facility of the United States Botanic Garden. I'm Deputy Executive Director Dr. Susan Pell and today we're going to talk again about the genus Saracenia, one of our two native pitcher plant genera here in the United States, the other one being Darlingtonia. We visited this plant earlier in the season to talk about its pitcher modified leaves that trap insects and that's how this plant gets a lot of its nutrients and now I'm going to talk to you about the morphology of the bloom of these plants. You can see their flowers are sort of pendulous, sort of hang down and they're born on these long stalks which keeps the flowers away from the pitchers that are trying to trap insects. They don't want to trap their pollinators because they want them to visit other plants to cross pollinate. These plants have a very elaborate way of preventing self-pollination. Their morphology is quite interesting. There are three little bracts, these smaller structures here on the backside of the blooms. They also have five sepals. These are the structures here, the maroon structures. And then they have these petals that hang down and blow in the wind. And then inside the flower, we look a little bit further in here we can see this very interesting sort of umbrella-like structure here in the middle. This is a modification of the female part of the plant. The female part of the plant is called the pistil, and this is a modification of the style or the stalk that sort of goes between the ovary and the part of the pistil that's receptive to pollen, that part being called the stigma. This is a very complicated morphology here. Typically, the style is just stalk-like, and I can show you, I've cut off that little umbrella-like structure here, and you can see it's really coated in pollen. The pollen actually falls from the anthers. This is the little umbrella-like style from this flower here. You can see those yellow parts there. Those are the anthers, which is part of the stamen, the male part of the flower. And these have all opened up and shed their pollen already. And it falls into that little sort of umbrella or cup-like style. Now, when the pollinator visits the flower, it's gonna visit this cup to get that pollen. And then when it crawls back out, it's gonna be coated in pollen. And the next flower that it visits, it's gonna to have to squeeze in between the petals here, and it'll pass by these little pointy structures here. And if we look closer at those, what we'll see is the stigma, the part of the flower that's receptive to pollen. That little dot there, right at the tip of my thumb, that little dot is the stigma, the part of the flower that will receive pollen and allow for fertilization to happen. Now, fertilization is successful. Pollination is successful. What we'll have is a fruit that'll form. This is last year's fruit. You can see these structures here are the curled up sepals. This is that umbrella-like style. And then inside here, the ovary, you can see it right there, has become a fruit. This is, again, last year's. And that is what's known as a capsule. And it'll split open and it'll spread its seeds. If we look at the ovary for this year, this flower, you can see here, right there in the middle. Again, I've cut away the style in this one um, so that we can look at that. But this sort of bulbous structure right there in the middle, this thing here in the middle, that's the ovary. And that's what's gonna become that capsule or fruit in the, in the fall, basically. All right, well, thank you for joining me today and I look forward to our future botanical adventures.